Welcome back to the channel, shiny, crafty people. I'm Tim Totten, your host. Thanks for joining me. This week we are going to create something for a friend of mine who is a scuba diver and who's going to be taking out an expedition, and that is this really cool scuba flag mask. So let's look at what we need to get started. For this scuba diving flag mask, we're going to need a couple of things. A rotary cutter and some type of grid or just a pair of scissors. We're gonna need a piece of white fabric at least 11 inches long by about three inches wide. We're gonna need a couple of elastic ties and because this is going um, for a friend of mine who's six foot four, I'm gonna cut these 10 inch long ties and use a couple of toggles so that he can uh, adjust the, the, the size of it. Some red fabric and we're gonna use two pieces of that six inches by nine inches we're going to use something for a nose wire in the middle, and I like this fabric. This is actually a garden tie material from Dollar Tree. So you can go to Dollar Tree to their gardening section and you can get a roll of this. It's a soft, uh, pliable outside around a wire interior, and that's going to hold in real well. And then probably some pins. So the first step we're going to do is cut our materials. So I've already cut this white piece uh, at least 11 inches wide, but long by 3 inches wide, but I need to cut two of this red material. I'm just using a standard cotton material. In fact, I have it back to back. And I'm just going to cut a couple pieces that are at least that are six inches wide by nine inches. So here I actually have, um, I think I'm going to look on my table here. This is actually a 10 inch wide piece this way. So what I will do is go ahead and cut a six inch section out of that. And I'm lining up with the grid on my table. So I actually have a, a grid here that goes on my table and I can see how large the uh, the item will be. So I'm gonna use my cutter here. And in fact, if I go at least six, two, four, six over, I can use one line on the table here and go six. And then I can just use the, the ruler here, put the edge on six inches, lined up with the six inches line of the side of the material, make sure that it's still square here as well, and cut that. And you didn't quite see that, so let me give you, put you down a little more so you can see that. Basically, I went from six inches here to here, and now I'm cutting that off. And I'm gonna pull the fabric before I move the, the, the actual grid, because I wanna make sure that it all came, it, if for some reason it didn't come off and it had stuck, I, I would be pulling that fabric away, and then I could come back with my rotary cutter and double check it. So now I have it at least six inches wide, but I now I need it nine inches this way. So I'm going to rotate the material, and I'll put it at a line down here that uh, along one of these lines and along this line, so I know it's square. And I need to measure nine, but this is only an eight and a half inch ruler. So in fact, I'll use the basis of my uh, down here of my grid on the table, and I'll go to nine inches, and then I'll line up along there and making sure it's still in square and then I'll use the rotary cutter. Now if you haven't watched my video about how to properly use a rotary cutter and you're going to use one for the first time, please go check it out. I want to make sure you do it correctly. So now I have two pieces of this red material, the front and the back. Now normally I would, I would say use two different colors, but we're going to make these two different colors because we're in fact going to turn this white material, we're going to add that to one side to create that dive flag and that'll make it look like a different material. So why don't we go ahead and get started on that part. What I've decided is I kind of want a, a one inch wide piece of that going across. So I cut this three inches because I'm gonna fold it in half and stitch down the entire thing. Now one of the secrets of, of flipping and folding this and then being able to turn it back inside out is to have some kind of a ribbon. I'm gonna take a ribbon and I'm gonna sew it inside this tube and I'm going to stitch it to the top and down the sides and then I can pull and turn the entire thing inside out. Let's go to the sewing machine so we can see how that works. So what I'm going to do here at the machine is I'm going to decide which side of this I want facing out and since it's white on both sides I'll just pick the side that I think is brighter or whiter and then I'm going to fold it in half and I'm just going to finger press it using my finger to press that in place all the way down. 
Now remember, we have, we're working on a piece that is six by nine, but what's important about working on this is that the distance angled here is actually more, it's actually more like 11 inches, so I've gone at least more than 11 here so that we can center it on there. Now I, I would normally just stitch all the way down the side here with a half inch seam allowance, and then I'd have to figure out how to turn this whole thing inside out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up I'm going to lay in a piece of ribbon and fold it in half and then I'm going to stitch from the from the folded side down just to lock that in. And you'll notice that my machine has been threaded with white fabric and then I'm going to make sure that it's tucked in all the way down. Tuck it in all the way down to the end here so it comes out and into that fold. And then I will stitch all the way down and I'm going to use a little less than a half inch seam allowance on it because I want about an inch when it's turned. Now you could use a guide on your machine or you could pin this if you needed to. And this machine's actually set at the lowest setting right now. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Now here's a secret. We don't come back over it at the end. You can't sew back over it at the end. If you did that, then you couldn't turn it inside out. Now I will come along and maybe trim this up so I don't have so much extra material. So I could have made this a little smaller to begin with, but a three inch is a little easier to cut than a two and three quarters or something like that. So let's come back over to the table and I will trim this to the right length. So I'll just, uh, the right width. I'm just gonna cut a lot of this seam off of the edge. And I'm gonna, you know, get really close to it with my probably about an eighth of an inch seam in there. So now I've just left a tiny amount of seam there. And now I'm gonna turn it back inside out. So what I'm gonna do is I will sort of hold and pull and see what it's doing. It's flipping this inside out. I'm kind of like skinning it. So you'll notice now it's getting smaller because it's disappearing inside. And then now that end starts to pop out down here. And it's one of the reasons why I cut this more like 15 inches rather than 11 is because now I can come along and cut off those edges and not have to worry about all that extra sticking in there. So now you'll notice that I have this nice piece that's already sort of turned where I need it turned, but I can go over to my iron, which I'll do right now, over to my iron, get those red pieces out of the way, and I will give it a little bit of a, an iron to make sure Now I'm using like a, a nylon material, which is really something you would normally iron, although it's pretty, it's pretty strong standing up to heat. Because I want it to be real shiny, but you could use a cotton would be just fine. And now we've made that piece and I'm just gonna come in with my scissors. Here they are. And I'll just trim that off at the end. Peel out the rest that was stuck in there. And now I have my piece of material. Now I'm gonna bring this over to where we were at the sewing machine again. Lay out my red piece and place this on top from corner to corner. And then I just need to pin it in place. So I'm just gonna go over, I'm just gonna be pretty uh, liberal with how far I go over it on either side. So I'll come in here and I'm gonna use my pins pretty liberally, like I said, because I wanna make sure this is being held in. Now you could go right down the middle if you chose to, um, but I'm worried about it getting caught in the machine that way. So I'm gonna go this direction. I'll pin the other corner as well. And I don't think it matters which way you come along it. Let's hope everything works in there. Oh, look at that. It's starting to look like that scuba flag now. And actually, you know, it reminds me that maybe I should look online to make sure I'm designing this the same way a scuba flag is supposed to look. So, you know, sometimes I do this. I'll, I'll start in, see the scuba flag here is going in that same direction from the top left to the bottom right. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna take this over to the machine I'll bring you with me. And I am going to 
put this, ooh, I lost you. I'm gonna sew this down. I think you should be over this direction. Maybe make more sense where you are. There you go, a lot better. You can see that a lot better. I love being my own camera person. Okay, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna stitch right along the edge. And I'm gonna go really slow and go just over my pins. Now, don't let that scare you. I'm not bothered by it, but I'm gonna go really slow. And I'm gonna use my needle down position. My machine has that ability to do needle down and I think that's really helpful. And I'm using the width of just the inside of the presser foot here. Like literally, I'm not even going down over to the other edge. I'm just using the, the center of that and going right along the edge of this white. Just keep going off and you'll see what that's done is it has stitched, if it'll focus for you, it's stitched all along that edge. Then I bring it back to the machine the other way around and now I can probably take these pins out because um, it's now held in there pretty well. I'll start way off of the red fabric. Now I'm using, um, for the overall mask idea, I'm gonna use the Deaconess pattern. Uh, that's uh, recommended by a specific hospital system. And so you see now we've got our part ready to go and I can actually flip this over now and trim off those excess pieces. So I will do that next. I will come in here and just trim off the little tails of white that are stepping over. Trim off these tails of white here. All right, so our next step, our next step is to get our other piece of red fabric, face them together. All right, and then I have to add the elastic inside. Now those elastic pieces are gonna go on the two side edges here. So let me peel back the top one. I'll just move it out of the way. And I'll take my two pieces of elastic and I'm gonna pin them. And those are the ears coming from this way. So I'm going to pin them here from top to bottom, and you have to leave a little bit of distance. Now remember, you have to leave at least a half an inch or so here because you're gonna do a quarter inch seam or more. So I like to come in and you can use, here's a, here's a great tip. Another great tip would be to use your grid right here. Lay your grid next to it. And if I put it down there, I can say, okay, I have to at least come in a half an inch. So this is a full inch, at least a half an inch. So I would start my, I would start my elastic at least a half an inch in. And I like to leave a tiny, right at the edge there. And I'll put the pin coming from the outside in. See how I've done that? I've done the pin sticking out in because when I cover this over, the pin's gonna disappear. And I don't want that pin to be gone. Okay, so I do that one. Then the other important point, make sure you don't twist your elastic around. So I'm gonna leave the elastic flat, flatten it out and come back over here and do the same thing. Put the right edge of the elastic no closer than a half an inch from the end and put another pin in here from the outside going in. Ah, perfect. So I'll just flip the other side and do the other one real quick. You could, if you really wanted to be um, particular about this, you could get some red elastic, although for a long time, there wasn't any elastic available at the beginning of, you know, in March when the pandemic first started and it was sort of impossible to find materials, you know, you couldn't have found anything. And now you can order all kinds of stuff and get colored elastic. I think this is just a quarter inch elastic that I'm using, which is actually a pretty, a pretty big elastic. It's not as soft as um, some that I would like, but he's gonna be using this on like a dive expedition. And I'm thinking maybe he might want it to be a little bit stronger. So using that thicker quarter inch elastic is gonna be real helpful for him. All right, I've got all four of those done and I'm just gonna be sewing around the outside. So I'm gonna flip this back over and I will pin this in place. Now, I don't love a lot of pins. Frankly, I'm kind of a fan of not winging it, but just lining up rectangles and going. But I think it would be helpful to put a few in just because we have this extra fabric underneath the white fabric, it might be helpful to see um, you know, where that 
uh, where that is and, and that it doesn't buckle up in any way. Because it can add some, and also the elastic can add a little bit. The elastic can add some problems. So um, I always like to do my pins perpendicular to how I'm sewing. That means going across which way I'm going to sew. And I do that because then I can pull them out from the side as I'm sewing. Some people like them in the same direction as they're sewing. So if they were gonna sew on this line, they'd want all the pins to be like this so they could pull them out beforehand. That's just not the way I work. I wasn't raised that way, so I don't do it that way. All right, so we have that entire piece ready. We're gonna sew around almost all of it. The difference being though that we're gonna leave a little bit to be able to turn. We have to leave a little bit to turn. And in fact, at the top and bottom, I'll use a slightly wider, uh, wider uh, seam allowance. And you're gonna see why in a moment. So in fact, instead of going to quarter inch seam allowance here, I'm gonna go a little bit over. But if you were doing a quarter inch seam allowance, you would just pick the, um, the width of your presser foot, so to speak. So I start sewing and I'm using a relatively thin, uh, small stitch length. Now this pin is stuck in that direction, so I'm gonna take it out. And I'm just gonna sew off the edge. I don't really care, I'm gonna sew off the edge because I'm gonna trip, uh, trim these corners a little bit. Now where I get to the elastic, I might wanna go over that a little bit just to really secure it in place. Again, I just go off of it and I'm gonna take that pin out now that I've sort of sewn over it. I'm reinforcing the corners. You know, I didn't leave a place to turn this which was a mistake, but I'll leave it on this side over here. All right, and then I'm gonna come to the side over here. You can leave it at the top or the bottom. Some people like to do that. I don't think it really matters to me. So I'll leave a place, I'll, and I reinforce, because I'm gonna be turning through there. So I reinforce that, then skip a couple of inches, come down and start sewing again. As long as I make sure I put stitches into these elastics, remember, our elastic was right here at these corners. So I've got to make sure that those are still held in there and that I sort of went back and forth over them a little bit. So right off the edge. All right, so now what we've got is our rectangular piece done. You can see where our stitching is for that, that flag through the middle. And then we have that opening right over here so that we can turn it, which I can't get my fingers into, but. <laughs> I trust me, it's in there. There's two pieces of fabric here. There you go, there's our opening. And because I've reinforced it, it's gonna be easier to turn this inside out. The first thing I'm gonna do before I get too far is I, I want these corners to point out pretty well. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna trim the corner. I don't like to trim straight across. Some people just like to do a big chunk right across the, the top of that. I'll tell you why, because if you do that, you still get all this extra material. If you came through here and just did this, if you just came through and did a cross, an angle over crosswise, then all of this fabric still interrupts with each other. So I like to scoop it out a little more. So what I, how I do that is I go from outside, I will, let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit here so you can see a little better. I will start angling toward that point and then twist my scissors. So it really gave a scoop. And when I do to the other one, I will scoop like that so now it gives a bit of a scooping shape it just seems to work better when you go to pile when you go to try to shove this corner back together you don't have extra material trying to fight for the space in there there we go all right what we're going to do next is we're going to turn this thing um, inside out and we got to put our nose piece in So I'm gonna turn it inside out. And one of the things you could do with this nose piece is if you know uh, that, that this is going to be um, the, the, the top, you could come in here and either glue the nose piece in to this spot. You could glue it, you could fold this over and put a stitch or a pin or something else just to hold it in place. I'm gonna turn this inside out and iron it and then I'll shove it up in there and, and hold it when I flip the whole thing. So. Let me turn the whole thing inside out and I'm going to just sort of push it. See what I'm doing? I'm just sort of pushing all of that material out to birth it through. And when you start to see your elastic come out and your white stripe, you know you're in the right place.
Now you do have to turn these points out and it's not as hard to do on the full, just the area, the red ones, but it is harder to do on these sides that have the white material. So we're gonna use a turner, like a bone turner or a bamboo turner. Right, let me get that and show you what it looks like. I'm back. This is a bone turner that I use, and, and it, they originally were made out of whale bone. This one's made out of plastic, and it's from the, the fabric store. You can get one, ones made out of bamboo as well. So what I'm going to do is come into the, this and shove through that opening that we made, and just push the point in to very gently push these points out. Now the thing you have to be careful of doing is you can't, you don't want to shove through the point. That's why you don't use a pair of scissors to do this. Okay, scissors are bad, you will break it. All right, let's do the other one where we have the actual, all of that extra material. Remember all this material's in here. I'm gonna go in with the pointer and then kind of push it along that edge. I'm pushing it right along this edge to point that out, okay? I'm gonna then sort of squish the fabric down to the other side and do the same kind of thing. Squish that fabric out here. And then it's going to look, look how nice that's going to look now. Kind of uh, pulled together so far. So let's take it over to the ironing board and I'll show you how to iron this nice and flat. So what I really want to do is make sure that when I'm ironing this, that I get everything nice and flat and I get all these corners out. So I can actually take my turner and I can come over here to the, and I can run it along the edges. See, I can come in here and run it along those edges. And that'll help flatten it out. And then I'm also going to want to fold this piece right here in because this is where I'm going to sew it back together along this edge, the seam. So let me get my iron and go ahead and hit this. Now I like a lot of steam. I think it's a worthwhile prospect. I think steam is your friend. It's gonna give us a really, really, set those seams really well. And we're gonna need it when we come back in and put our pleats in as well. All right, now that we've gotten ourselves just about ready to put in the pleats, I need to put the nose piece in first. So I'm gonna go in the side that we left open, and I'm gonna pick which, which part is gonna be the top, and I'm just gonna make this, this one over here the top. So I'm gonna shove that nose piece in, you can kind of see it under there. I'm gonna work it inside the fabric, all the way up there, center it as well as I can, and I'm gonna push it into that seam at the top. I need to get it all the way up into the seam as close as I can into the seam. Now I've done that, that's nice up into the seam, and I could either, and make sure it's sort of centered. I cut mine about three inches wide, so they're very big for your nose. I mean, you got plenty of room for your nose. Once I've done that, I'm gonna just kind of pin it into place. So I'm gonna take a pin and just put a pin in here just to keep it in line, if that makes sense. So the pin is all the way up next to that wire, pushing it out into the fabric. All right, our next step is gonna to be to either use a chalk pencil or a water soluble marker or something and put in our lines for our pleats, or we can just use pins. I'm going to use my handy dandy grid and I'll lay my grid down and I have my grid marks here, and I can see the marks on the side. I'm gonna measure down an inch and a half and put in a pin. And then I'm gonna measure down another half an inch below that and put in a pin. And I'm gonna do the same thing, another inch and a half. I'll measure another inch and a half down, and then another half an inch. This is gonna give us two pleats in our mask. And I need to do the same on the other side. So I spin it around, Actually, I don't need to do, I need to do it this, this way on that side because it's not the exact same equal amount and I wanna make sure we do this right. Um, and in fact, you know, this is gonna bring the pleats up so I actually need to do it the opposite direction. So let me take these out and start that over again. I'm gonna start on the bottom and measure up an inch and a half. 
That's the better plan. I'm going to measure up an inch and a half from the bottom. Okay. And then go another half an inch from there to put my the other part of my pleat in. Then I'm going to go another inch and a half. There we go. And then I will go another half an inch. Ah, perfect. And I'll bring off the other side and do the same thing. So I'll measure up an inch and a half. And the pins are going to help me flip and fold this. Another half an inch there. Another inch and a half. Of course, if you're making this size for children, and we'll offer some size information for children, you would make these pleats a little bit smaller. So now what I'm going to be able to do is literally um, fold this entire thing down at my inch and a half, and then back at the half an inch. Let's go over to the to the iron and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to come here at the, it's the, at the bottom. I'm gonna fold the entire thing up toward in half with at those first pins, at the first inch and a half pin. Fold it up from pin to pin and give it a little iron. A little steam, lots of steam. Then I'm gonna fold it back to the next pin, which is the half inch pin. And you'll see that basically puts in a half inch pleat there. Right, and then I give that a little steam love. Then I'm gonna do the same thing at the next one. I'm gonna fold completely over at that first pin, at the first pin, completely over. Give it a little steam love. and then fold it back at that half inch pin. Back at that half inch pin. And now I can give it a little more steam, really set everything in, and I'm ready to hold these where they are in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer my pins to go through all of the layers. Now the problem here is that I've got, I've got a soft cutting or ironing board underneath and I don't want to go through it. So I'm going to carefully put those in and then I'll take the other pins out that aren't going through everything. Flip it around, do the same thing here. Put a pin through all of the layers. All of these layers, put your, put your pieces back together. There we go. Pin through all the layers. And one of these things has done is it's sort of closed up where we had our opening over here. And when we stitch across there, it'll be held in place. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine and show you what this looks like. So here at the machine, I'm going to start at the end with our white stitching and I'm going to stitch Either all the way on a right white or I could do red. What I'm gonna do for this one, because I wanna be really particular, is I'm just gonna stitch this part in white. You see the part that's that is white. And I'm gonna pick a very I'm gonna pick not quite a quarter inch seam allowance because I want to be able to catch everything. So I did all that. I'm gonna come back to this other piece and do the same thing. Just the white portion. And then I'll come back and sew the two red pieces. So let me change out my my uh, bobbin and my top thread real quick. Now this is something um, I get really good at doing because I we sew big long things here at my workshop, like so lots of big quilts and other things. And you have to get really good at um, threading your machine quickly. So I've gotten really, really good at it. In fact, this is one of the things I could do in my sleep is thread one of these sewing machines. Now obviously you learn your sewing machine yourself and figure out how to do it. The only thing I haven't been as good at is um, getting the thread to actually go through the needle. As I get older, that's the kind of thing that sometimes takes longer. Even though I now have glasses, for a while I just thought, oh, they're just making these needles smaller. And it turns out I was just losing my eyesight. <laughs> um, I really need to put that back in there and over. And then, yeah, I've gotten actually pretty good at just sort of guessing, poking and guessing. 
And sometimes you gotta lick your fingers and make it work, but it worked, look at that. Yes, I made it happen. All right, so, no, that's not the right way. I thought I had it working. There we go. And then I'm gonna sew the other portions, and I'll have to do a little trimming, of course, but I kinda like the idea that we, we watch the color on this. Just tack it back, just using a less than a quarter of an inch, because I wa also wanna make sure I catch that part that we have to hold in. Also, I'm gonna go a little bit over those, those elastics, remember? And again, I could hear the people out in sewing world saying, don't sew over those needles, but I did. So I will try to be better. Now this is the side that has the piece in it, remember? So I have to take a little bit wider of a stitch here. And in fact, it's probably gonna have trouble going under my machine, but I'm gonna try to shove it in at the distance that I want. Pull the needle out, keep it underneath there. Oh, it's working beautifully, look at that. That actually works really, really well. Come to the edge here, don't go all the way off. Now this is the side that I had to, that we're closing up. So I'm gonna use a little thicker, more of like a quarter inch seam allowance there and go through it. Double the end over and maybe I go back on that one and wanna give it a little extra. Nice, that's done. So let me pull the needle, the pins out. Ooh, let me see where you are. Ooh. So now I have created that mask. I have to trim some stuff up, but the way it's gonna work is he'll pinch the nose, put it over here, hook it on once he's got some toggles on it, and it'll fit a little better. Let me do a little trimming and then we'll be right back to take a look at it. All right, I'm just trimming the last few threads here just to get those sort of out of the way. So it looks a little nicer. So when I send it to him, it's not just threads dangling everywhere. And what I'm gonna do is add some toggles. Oh, I missed one. And one down here. I'm gonna add some toggles on the sides here so that it's a little easier for him to, to adjust it. Now I only have black toggles, but I think those will look all right here. If I had some white ones, it would probably look better or red ones. So I'm going to, these are like uh, cord locks and I'm going to shove that through. And now that gets pretty difficult to do. So you can do two things. You can use a bodkin or you can um, use a, a, a paper clip that you do, or you can just take a pin right here. I'm just gonna take a, a, a pin and put it through that edge. See how that's gonna go? Creates a little point and I can just squeeze and push that right through. And now I pull it, the pin through and it's fit right through the edge and I will go the other way. Now, I'm gonna try this on for you and show it to you um, how good it looks. So again, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to fold that right in half, put a pin through the point that is the halfway point, sticking out, sticks out. I'm gonna squeeze my cord lock so it gets that hole in the middle there that I wanna go through. Put the pin through it, and then I can pull it. Look at that. As I was saying, I'm gonna wash this so I can try it on. I'm just getting you in a position where you can see me. Oh, you're way too close. It's like, so I can find the, the, the top, which is where that bendy piece is, right? Where that bendy nose wire was. And then with the adjustables, I can put them on my ears. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll take my glasses off for a moment. And then squeeze it on my nose, pull it down. And now, let me put my glasses back on. My friend who is a scuba diving instructor and guide can wear his scuba mask when he leads an expedition in a couple weeks. Isn't that fantastic? Well, thank you shiny crafty people for joining me here on the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It certainly helps out the channel. It helps keeping us big videos like this for you. Until next time, stay crafty. Bye.